let's pick up where we left off in the previous episode we found the cross product right so remember that the flux the flux is uh, the flux of a vector field over a surface is given by the double integral over the surface of the vector fields in question dot did with the normal the normal vectors of our surface so this is really a picture this is not an equation this is a picture saying that if you have some surface and you have the normal vector here, the normal vector, let's say I have a normal vector here, and you have a force vector here, and you take their dot product, that's gonna give you the flux, and you do that over the entire surface. So we just found, in the last episode, we found what this is. This happens to be this, this entire vector. So we're gonna plug it in, and uh, we're gonna take it from there. So let me write this in, in a smaller way so I have some space. So, <coughs> so the flux is given by this double integral ds over s. And our f here, our f is equal to z y x. And uh, z, what is z? Oh yeah, I erased, I, I erased everything. So now I have to remember it from my head. So z is rho cosine phi. Now I'm gonna write it from memory, but uh, I have to check because I haven't memorized it. I just, it's just uh, somehow I remember. So sine theta. And by the way, you should never memorize this kind of stuff because uh, it's uh, criminal to memorize it. So. In fact, I will check my work right now. Let me make sure I didn't mess up. So I'm going to draw the, this is the picture I draw every time to remember the spherical coordinates. So this is rho. This is, uh, this is phi. Uh, remember here that rho is 1, right? So we're going to set all of these to 1 later. This is phi. So this is rho sine phi. Uh, this is rho cosine phi, cosine phi. Uh, this is rho sine phi and this is theta so this is rho sine phi cosine theta that's your x indeed that's what i put for x uh, for this this is indeed what you should get for y it's just rho sine phi but sine theta instead of cosine of theta and z is indeed uh, rho cosine phi so good that means i, I wrote it down correctly so by the way that's the picture you can draw every time you forget spherical coordinates. So, so uh, we have our force field and we have our uh, normal vector. So this is our force field and this is our normal vector. Uh, you're just going to copy it down from here. Sine squared phi, uh, sine squared phi, cosine theta, sine squared phi, sine theta, and sine phi, cosine phi, sine phi, cosine phi. So, okay, so let's take the dot product. So let's take the dot product of f dot n. Why? Well, you want to find out how much of the vector field is contributing to the flux, or to the flow across the surface. So let me erase this uh, because uh, it's taking up unnecessary space. And so now, so I want to finish this up for, uh, for the episode. So let's, let's do it. So dot product is very simple. You multiply and you add. So, oh, and one thing, remember that the radius of our sphere is 1, so rho is just 1, right? Rho is just 1. So that makes our lives a little bit easier. So that's just 1. So let's go ahead and multiply through. We have sine squared phi, okay? Cosine phi, cosine theta plus Okay, so we just finished those. We have sine phi, sine theta, okay. Uh, now you have to go slowly because otherwise you'll make a mistake. So sine squared phi times sine phi is just sine cubed phi. Uh, times uh, sine theta times sine theta is just sine squared theta. So we, the, we finished those two. And we have sine phi, sine phi, that's sine squared phi and cosine phi cosine theta cosine phi cosine theta okay so this whole thing is our dot product so all we have to do now is take the double integral of this 
uh, which is uh, not an easy task, but uh, we will try to do that. So, but before I do any double integration, let's see if there's any common terms here. So I see sine squared phi cosine squared cosine phi and sine squared phi cosine phi uh, cosine theta cosine theta. You see, you see these two terms are literally the same, right? You can see these two terms are the exact same, right? So we're going to add them up. We're going to add them up. So we have two sine squared phi cosine phi cosine theta plus sine cubed phi sine squared theta. Okay, and we're going to take the double integral of this uh, d theta d phi. And what is your uh, parameter domains uh, limits of integration? Well, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And oh, let me and then nicely 2 pi. And phi goes from 0 to pi, not 2 pi. So how are we going to do this? Um, since we're doing theta first, you want to, the reason why I chose to do theta first is because it makes your life a little easier. Uh, if you do theta first, all of this is just a constant. So this is just sine theta. Now, here's the trick. You have to be smart about this or you're going to waste half of your time doing unnecessary math. If you integrate this, what are you going to get? Don't do it by hand. Just think about it. If you integrate cosine theta, you get sine theta. But sine theta evaluated at 0 and 2 pi is just 0. So this whole thing is just, just drops out. We had to do no math. We just had to think a little bit. And we, we saved ourselves half of, half of the work. So now, now, all we have to do is find the double integral. <laughs> it's like a half the integral, right, of, of this. Sine cubed phi sine squared theta d theta d phi. OK, so now you have to do some work. Now you can't make jokes or fool around. What is sine squared theta? Well, we're going to use, let, let's come over here. Let's use the identity that cosine of 2 theta is equal to, let me remember, uh, sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. OK, actually, that's wrong. Right? That's, that's what happens when you memorize something. Uh, it's cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So that's the hyperbolic function. And so now we want to solve for sine, right? Sine squared theta, sorry. So now we rewrite cosine squared theta as 1 minus sine squared theta uh, minus sine squared theta uh, is equal to cosine 2 theta. So now you just solve, this is just algebra, is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So I bring the 1 over here. This is a minus. I flip it. So I have 1 minus cosine 2 theta, and I divide by 2. So 1 minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2 should be sine squared theta. Now let me check if I did my algebra right. Uh, I bring the 2 here. OK. I bring the 1. So I have 2 sine squared minus 1. Then I flip it because of the minus. So I have OK. So it looks good. Now we're going to come over here and uh, finish the job. OK, so just to um, show that it works out, I have 2 sine squared theta. And this becomes minus cosine 2 theta is 2 sine squared theta minus 1. And I'll flip it and I'll get this. OK, good. So this is what I need to plug in for sine squared uh, theta over here. So let's go ahead and do that. I have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to pi, sine cubed phi uh, times this, right? So times half minus half cosine 2 theta, d theta d phi. OK. So um, OK, let's do it. So integrate this. You get theta over 2. Integrate this. I'm going to get sine 2 theta divided by 2 by, because of chain rule. So I'm going to get sine 2 theta over 4. So I have theta over 2 minus sine 2 theta over 4. OK? So let's maybe we can come over here. OK? So we have <coughs> the double integral from 0 to 2 pi, uh, from 0 to pi. OK? Uh, we have sine cubed phi. OK? And so this is going to become theta over 2. Theta over 2 minus sine 2 theta over 4. Sine 2 theta 
over 4 from, from theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi, uh, d phi. And so, actually, I don't have to write this integral anymore because I already integrated. So you don't have to worry about half of the integral. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. So notice, again, again, you have sine of 2 theta. You're evaluating it at points where sine is 0. Completely forget about it. So here you just have 2 pi over 2. That gives you pi on the outside. So we're left with the integral of, uh, we're left with pi times the integral of sine cubed phi d phi from 0 to pi. So let's do it. So how do you integrate this? Well, you have to break up the sine in sine cubed into sine squared phi and sine phi. So don't memorize these tricks, but if you do uh, enough integrals, then you'll, you'll get the hang of it. So I replace sine squared phi with, uh, don't forget this pi factor over here. I replace the uh, the, the sine squared phi with 1 minus cosine squared phi uh, times sine phi d phi d phi and now I just uh, do a u substitution for cosine of phi right so then I will have du minus du over sine of phi is equal to d phi so then I have pi now my limits of integration are going to change. Cos I, I substitute it in for cosine of phi, right? So cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi is minus 1. And so I have 1 minus u squared. So this is going to become u squared. And this, as you can see, is just going to cancel out uh, by virtue of this sine of phi. So if that cancels out and I have this minus sign, then I'll have this flipped over to u squared minus 1. u squared minus 1 du now this is this is a joke uh, let's just do it for the sake of finishing the problem so I will have one third of u cubed minus u evaluate from 1 to minus 1 so this is the hard part right because the hardest part of the problem was not the cross product or the dot product or the double integrals it's the addition right you have to know how to add and subtract so let's do that so plug in the minus 1 plug in the minus 1 Okay, and let's subtract from that 1. So hopefully this will give me the right answer. Okay, so let me make some room here. So what is this? So minus 1 cubed is minus 1 times 1 third is minus 1 third. Minus minus 1 is plus 1. So minus 1 third plus 1 is 2 thirds, hopefully. Right, so 2 thirds. And what do I have here? I have 1 cubed is 1 times 1 third is 1 third minus 1 is minus 2 thirds but there's another minus so I have to make it a plus sign and so I'm left with my final answer of 4 thirds pi okay folks so hopefully that was uh, you should be able to do this in your head